talking about that three years ago. Yeah? Been working on that the whole time? Nice little uh, narrative, uh, beginning, middle, and end. Number 10. Drunk Brian and Stewie. Why are we in here? It's rude to the... The other people. You're drunk. You're sexy. In order to control his temper, Stewie starts drinking until he's too intoxicated to be his usual tyrannical self, much to Brian's chagrin. To get him to kick the habit, Brian takes Stewie out drinking so that he'll get so drunk he'll never want to touch alcohol again, only to end up getting drunk himself. Thanks, Horace. Hey, is he 18? Horace, the drinking age is 21. Oh. After an inebriated guy's night out, the two end up driving their car through the bar's wall. Neither of them gets hurt, thankfully. It was, it was like all slowed down, you know? And I was like, whoa, but I couldn't stop it. In the end, Brian's plan works, and Stewie vows to never drink alcohol again, learning to accept that he can't change his true nature thanks to his friend's overexposure technique. Sadly, that doesn't rule out Stewie getting tipsy off of cough syrup later on, though. Stewie, I told you, there's alcohol in that. It's not for kids. You're not for kids. <laughs> Number nine. Stop. Wait. Who the deuce are you? Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm you. When Brian and Stewie use the time machine, again, they end up traveling all the way back to the very first episode of the series and have a playful jab at what their show used to be. But of course, that was my victory day. The fruition of my deeply laid plans to escape from that cursed ovarian Bastille. Return the device, woman. Jesus, what'd you carry a thesaurus around with you? Unfortunately, their meddling of the past, mostly Brian's, has disastrous effects on the future, and they'll have to go back to stop their previous selves. Oh my god, civil war? See, Brian, this is exactly what I was talking about. Only to end up in a loop where all of their future selves come back to try to stop all of their other future selves. Wait, stop! We're from the further, further future. What you guys do eventually works out. It's what you two are about to do that ruins everything! <laughs> Stop! Don't do anything! Oh, for God's sake! This eventually proves too much for Stewie, who forces all their alternate selves to go home, restoring the timeline as we know it, and reminding us how frustrating time travel really is. But wait, if one of me is dead, then shouldn't all the me's be dead? Brian, I, I don't... I, it's, I, don't, I don't know anymore. I, I, you know what? I guess not. Number eight, you and I. Ugh, I couldn't sleep a wink. My pillow smelled like farts. But that's all right, because we're in England. Halfway through Brian and Stewie's European trip, the two break out into a catchy musical number that explains how different the two really are from each other. You and I are so awfully different. While the song definitely highlights their differences, it also showcases just how well they work as a duo, singing in perfect harmony, bouncing off each other, and even shooting clever jokes and comebacks at one another. Oh, come on, you look like Charlie Brown. Bite me, Snoopy. That alone is a perfect example of how the Road 2 episodes work, emphasizing the duo's camaraderie, even if they claim not to see it at first. It also helps that they usually have each other's back, like Brian does when Stewie later learns the sad truth about his favorite show. You want to take a dump in Mother Maggie's shoes? Okay, let's go take a dump in Mother Maggie's shoes. Number 7. Stewie Saving Brian's Life While fans were outraged when Brian was unexpectedly killed in Season 12, the one who took it the hardest was Stewie. Damn it, Brian, you can't die! We were gonna do so many things together! We were gonna become windsurfers! I was going to be a little better than you, but we were both going to be good. He blamed himself for destroying the one tool that could bring his best friend back. And he was the last to accept Vinny as the new family dog. And even then, he never really moved on. What's the matter? Fine. Do you want to know what's the matter? You're the matter. Everyone in this family is so damn thrilled with you, they've forgotten all about Brian. However, when an opportunity to save Brian emerges, Stewie takes that chance and succeeds. It may seem like a cop-out, but be honest. These two have become inseparable up to this point in the series. And while Stewie won't remember this dreadful arc, Brian will never forget how his best friend saved his life. Number 6. Friendship Divided Over a Bear The only other person Stewie likes more than Brian is his teddy bear Rupert. When his jealousy of the doll finally reaches its peak, Brian chews Rupert to pieces in a drunken haze, effectively crushing his and Stewie's friendship. Look at me, watch, see what I'm doing? Twitter. Unfollow, Instagram, unfollow, Snapchat, unfollow, and there we go. Done. We are not friends anymore. But Stewie, uh I... Dikembe Mutombo, will you do the thing? Brian, you are blocked! <laughs> Brian can't understand why Stewie, unquestionably the smartest baby alive, still cares about some stuffed bear, until the toddler reveals that he would have still had one friend after Brian eventually passes on. 
for real this time. And one day, all too soon, I'm going to be crying at your funeral in an Armani suit. And people are going to be like, oh, nice suit. And I'm going to be like, why are you talking about my awesome $2,000 suit? My friend's dead. Eventually, Brian makes amends by helping Stewie spread Rupert's ashes and delivering a tearful eulogy. And then he secretly buys Stewie a replacement Rupert to give him his sole confidant back, showing that even the most intense falling outs can't keep the duo split up forever. Rupert, you've come back to me! Number five, how are you coming on that novel? How are you coming on that novel you're working on? Huh? During the Stewie Griffin The Untold Story after party, Brian mentions that he's been working on a novel. During the episode Brian the Bachelor, Stewie decides to playfully badger Brian about why he hasn't been making any progress on the book after three years, his voice becoming more and more high-pitched with every question. Yeah, talking about that three years ago. Yeah, been working on that the whole time. Nice little uh, narrative, uh, beginning, middle, and end. Some friends become enemies, some enemies become friends, yeah? At the end, your uh, main character is uh, richer for the experience, yeah? Stewie prods Brian like this twice throughout the episode. Make those second hundred pages really keep the reader guessing what's going to happen? Some twists and turns? Little epilogue? Everybody learns the hero's journey isn't always a happy one? Yeah, I look forward to reading it and tries to go for a third in a later episode, but Brian is a poor sport. Read your article too, Brian. Seems to me you should spend less time working for the paper and more time working on that novel you've been working on. <laughs> it's always funny to watch Stewie get under Brian's skin and see how high his voice can get, though the gag kind of loses its charm when Brian tries to use it against him. Little, uh, little music video? Little compilation of visual images to go with a song? Little four-minute movie that tells the story of it? Yeah, that only works when I do it. Number four, Cool Whip. When Brian gives Stewie a piece of pie, Stewie asks for some Cool Whip, putting a heavy emphasis on the H in whip. Ooh, let me have some of that Cool Whip. What'd you say? This greatly annoys Brian as he tries to get Stewie to pronounce it correctly, but to no avail. Though he can say whip by itself just fine. This ended up starting one of the show's funniest running gags. This evening is ruined. Look, I, wait, what? This evening is ruined. The whole evening is ruined. Why are you saying it like that? Saying what? I'm just pointing out the party's ruined. You know what? I'm not going to get sucked into this. Stewie unintentionally annoying someone, almost always Brian, by mispronouncing a word. Though some have proved to be immune to the gag. Everything's better with Cool Whip. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, what about it? It doesn't bother you the way I pronounce it? Cool whip? No, why would it? Others have tried their take at the gag, and while it usually ends hilariously, no one can do it quite like our dynamic duo can. Now, say Will Wheaton. 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 Hey, did you hook up with Whoopi Goldberg on the show? All the time. Number three, tender moment locked in a bank vault. In the season eight bottle episode, Brian and Stewie end up locked in a bank vault for a weekend of tension, disgusting sight gags, and just overall trying to put up with each other. Near the end, however, Brian confides a personal secret to his young friend. He keeps a gun in a safety deposit box in case he ever wants to kill himself. And that bottle of scotch? I was saving it for my last drink. Whoa, heavy. Taken aback by this, Stewie admits that Brian is the only one in his life that he really cares about, and that the dog gives him purpose. What would I do if you weren't here? Hmm? You're the only one who makes my life bearable. While the episode's gross-out humor didn't win over the audience, this scene makes up for it by cementing how strong Brian and Stewie's bond really is. Hey. What? Will you read to me? Sure. Wait, 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 I, I, I want to get all snuggled in. Okay, go. Number two, where's my money? Stewie decides to become a bookie for a big boxing fight and asks Brian to place a bet. You've got Carol Channing, the actress, beating Mike Tyson, the boxer. Hell, give me 50 bucks on Tyson. And the dog ends up owing the toddler 50 bucks. He tries to procrastinate paying his debt, but Stewie is having none of that. He viciously beats Brian up with a towel rack, tries to drown him in a toilet, shoots his kneecaps, and even sets him on fire, all while demanding his money. Where's the money? Ah! Ah! Yeah, you like that? That feel good? While Stewie torturing his best friend is brutal to watch, it's absurd and funny how high he can escalate things. You freaking psychopath! Yeah, clean yourself up. The moral of the story? Never, ever make a wager with Stewie. Where's my money? Where's my money? Yeah, you got money to pay for fake mustaches, huh? Yeah, yeah, how, how much you pay for that fake mustache? Fortunately, Brian gets his revenge with a few mind games. All right, all right, I tell you what, you get one free revenge shot at me. Okay, 
but I'm not going to tell you when it's coming. And a hilariously cruel payoff. I don't understand. Why am I the source of your fears? Hmm, huh, I'm not sure. Maybe this means that deep down, the thing I'm most afraid of is disappointing you. Would you shave my coin purse? Oh! Oh! Oh, oh no! No way, man. Heart and soul. I fell in love with you, heart and soul. The way a fool would do madly. Get out of the Get out of the car right now, man! Do it! Do it! Do it! Get out of the car! Number one, Road to Rhode Island. Where are the bags? What the deuce do you mean, where are the bags? They're right here. Rupert, I tell you to watch the bags. What starts as Brian going to pick up Stewie from his grandparents quickly turns into a Bob Hope and Bing Crosby episode as they embark on a convoluted and hilarious journey back home, with Brian getting closure with his departed mother along the way. Mom. Well, I say someone must have said a funny because your mother's in stitches. <laughs> Oh, I'll leave you to grieve. This was not only the very start of the Road 2 miniseries, but also the start of the true dynamic between our favorite talking dog and conniving infant as they work together and bounce off each other. We're quite a pair of partners, just like Thelma and Louise. Except you're not six feet tall. Yes, and your breasts don't reach your knees. Give it time. Before this episode, they were just two family members who constantly butted heads. But from this episode on, they would only grow closer not only as partners in crime, but also as best friends. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.